Okay, so today we're going to be looking at 5.5b, which is performing operations with complex numbers. Before we get into complex numbers, we're going to talk about imaginary unit i. That's an imaginary number. That i equals the square root of negative 1. It can be used to write the square root of any negative number. So this first property that we're going to look at, it says if r is a positive real number, then the square root of negative r equals i square root of r. So this first example, square root of negative 3, we would bring that negative on the outside. So we're making an i, and then we would have the square root of that positive number, which is 3. So basically what that imaginary does, it brings the negative on the outside of the radical, and then you're able to simplify that positive number that's left under the radical. On property 2, it tells us by property 1, it follows that the i square root of r squared equals a negative r. So, for example, if we come over here and we square i and we square the square root of 3, we would have i squared and then 3 because square root of 3 times square root of 3 equals 3. Now, when you're multiplying a radical times itself, it gets rid of the radical. So, i is the square root of a negative 1. So, if we square that, so square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1, we get negative 1 for i squared and then times 3. So, that gives us a negative 3. So these properties that we're using here, we're going to find i, which we already know is the square root of negative 1. <clears throat> i squared we just talked about. When you have the square root of a negative 1 times the square root of a negative 1, you get negative 1. Because when you're multiplying a radical times itself, it equals negative 1. Or the number under the radical. And then i cubed would be the square root of negative 1 times the square root of a negative 1 times the square root of a negative 1. So we know the square root of a negative 1 times the square root of a negative 1 is negative 1, and then we times that by the square root of negative 1. So that would be negative square root of negative 1. i to the fourth, we would have the square root of a negative 1 times the square root of a negative 1 times the square root of a negative 1 times the square root of a negative 1. So we know these two multiplied gives us a negative 1. We know these two multiplied gives us a negative 1. We multiply those two answers together, and we get a positive 1 for i to the fourth. Okay, so now we're going to solve a quadratic equation. We're going to use the square root method on these two examples because notice that we're missing the x term, which is the middle term. So first step would be to subtract 15 because we want to get x squared by itself. So we have 2x squared equals a negative 50, and then divide by 2. So you get x squared equals negative 25. And then we take the square root of both sides. Remember we talked about using the square root method on Friday, that we will have a positive and a negative answer. Now notice the square root of a negative 25, we can't take the square root of a negative number. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and change it to imaginary by bringing that negative on the outside and making it an i, and then we have a positive 25 under the radical. So simplify, once you take the negative out, simplify the radical. Square root of 25 is 5, so our answer would be positive and negative 5i. That number needs to be written in front of the i, it's just like a variable. So that would be your answer there. You have to have the i there because we have to know that there was a negative under the radical. Okay, example 3, we're going to subtract 13, so we get 3x squared equals negative 36, then divide by 3, so x squared equals a negative 12, and then take the square root. So we should have a positive and a negative, I'm going to bring that negative on the outside, so i, and then square root of 12. Now, 12 is not a perfect square, like the one that we just had, which was 25. So we need to use the factor tree. Remember we talked about how to simplify using factor tree. So 2 times 6, 2 times 3. We have a pair of 2s, and then we have left a 3. So we're adding your solution, positive and negative. We're going to bring a 2 out, so that needs to go in front of your i, and then square root of 3.
Okay, so let's take a look at the back. A complex number is a number of the form A plus BI. That is your standard form. A and B are real, part, real numbers, and I is the square root of a negative 1. A is going to represent your real part, and then the number BI will be your imaginary part. So we're going to talk about adding and subtracting the complex numbers. So to add or subtract two complex numbers, you're going to add or subtract their real parts and their imaginary parts separately. So notice on this first one, sum, which means you're adding, you're going to add the real parts, A plus C, and then you'll add your imaginary, so B plus D. Difference, you're subtracting. Subtract the real parts, A minus C. Subtract the imaginary parts, so B minus D. Okay, so looking at these examples, we're going to write the complex number in standard form, so make sure you put A plus BI. So the real part needs to come first, and then your imaginary part. So notice we're subtracting on A, so we're going to go ahead and subtract the real part, 6 minus 4, which is 2. And then we're going to subtract the imaginary part. So 3i minus a negative 1i. So you're subtracting a negative, which would make it plus. So you should get plus 4i. Because 3i minus a negative i would give you a positive 4i. So make sure you pay close attention to whenever you're subtracting. Okay, adding on b. So we're going to add 2 and 7. So that would give you 9. And then add your imaginary 5i plus a negative 2i, which would give you 3i. Okay, so then you're going to try 5 and 6 on your own. And then let's get big, look at the back. So we're going to be multiplying the following. We're going to write the complex number in standard form. So remember a plus bi. Okay, so notice we have parentheses, so we're going to distribute. So when we distribute, we get negative 36i minus 20i squared. So an i is just like a variable. So when you multiply an i times an i, you get an i squared. Okay. Now, remember on the front, we talked about i squared equals a negative 1. So anytime you have an i squared in your answer, you need to rewrite that with... Um, substituting in a negative 1 there. Okay, so that way you have a real part. Because notice on our standard form, we only have a real part and an imaginary part. So I'm going to have a negative 36i minus 20 times a negative 1. So that would be a positive 20 minus 36i. Because your real part comes first and then your imaginary part. Okay, so notice on 8... We are multiplying a binomial times a binomial, so we will use FOIL here. So multiply the first terms together, you get negative 10. Outside you get 4i. Inside you get negative 5i. Last terms you get positive 2i squared. So again, I told you i is just like having a variable, so you're going to combine like terms, so I can combine the middle two, two terms. So that's a negative 10 minus i. And then we're replacing i squared with a negative 1. So that would be 2 times a negative 1. So that would be minus 2 there. Notice now I have two different real parts. I'm going to combine those. So my answer would be negative 12 minus 1i. Okay, so now we're going to talk about a complex conjugate. A complex conjugate is when you have two complex numbers of the form a plus bi, the conjugate would be a minus bi. So it was very similar to whenever we had 2 plus the square root of 5, the conjugate of that was 2 minus the square root of 5. So you're just changing the operation of those two. Okay, so we're going to divide these complex numbers here. We're going to write the quotient, which means the answer from dividing in standard form.
Okay, so when you're dividing these, you're basically wanting to get rid of your imaginary part in the denominator. So you're going to be multiplying by the conjugate. So I have 6 plus 4i. just going to rewrite this over 2 plus i. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So that would be 2 minus i. So whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do the same exact thing to the numerator because 2 minus i divided by 2 minus i is just 1. So I'm not changing the value of our complex fraction here. Okay, so I'm multiplying a binomial times a binomial, which means I need to use FOIL like we just did on number 8. So that's going to give me 12 minus 6i plus 8i minus 4i squared. You're also multiplying binomials in the denominators. So 2 times 2, you get 4. 2 times negative i, you get negative 2i plus 2i. And then minus i squared. Okay, so we're going to combine like terms. I'm going to look at the top first. So combining those, we get a positive 2i. And then I'm also replacing my i squared with a negative 1. So that would end up making it positive 4 there. Because a negative 4 times a negative 1, we get a positive 4. So combining your real parts on top, you're going to get 16 plus 2i. And then looking at your denominator, those cancel. And we're subtracting a negative 1, which would make it 4 minus negative 1. So that would be a positive 5 on the bottom. And notice that it did tell us up here at the top, when you're multiplying complex conjugates, it's always a real number. So when we multiplied these two conjugates in the denominator, we got a real number. Okay, so from here you need to check and see if you can reduce all three of those numbers. And notice they cannot all be reduced by the same number. So that would be our answer there. Okay, so looking at 10. So we're going to multiply it by the conjugate of your denominator. So 3 minus i. So we're multiplying binomials. So you should get 24 minus 8i minus 12i plus 4i squared. And then your denominator, that would be 9 minus 3i plus 3i minus i squared. Okay, so combining like terms on the top, that's going to give us negative 20i. And then this right here, since i squared is a negative 1, that makes it a negative 4. So combining your real parts, 24 minus 4 is 20. And then minus your imaginary part, so minus 20i. These middles cancel here. I'm subtracting a negative 1, which would make it plus. So you should get 10. Okay, now notice that all of them can be reduced by 10. So your answer would be 2 minus 2i. And you don't have to write over 1.